What's up everyone, Alex here. As a YouTuber who does almost everything by myself, I have a soft spot for solo game developers. We've all heard of the successes of solo developers such as Concerned Ape with Stardew Valley and Toby Fox with Undertale. So when I learned that the cute and charming giraffe in Annika was made by one person, my ears perked up and I immediately got curious about it. Looking up trailers and screenshots, I immediately fell in love with the look of the world they've created. And now that the game is finally coming to consoles, I wanted to see if there's a fun little adventure behind its enchanting and enticing world. Giraffe and Annika is an adventure game with light rhythm, shooting, and platforming gameplay, solely developed by Atsushi Saito, also known as Atelier Mamina, and published by NIS America for consoles, who provided the code for this review. You play the role of Annika, who, after waking up from a dream, finds herself on an island not knowing who she was or how she got there. Shortly after exploring your immediate surroundings, you meet a young boy named Giraffe, who seems to know you somehow. He then mentions that he needs to obtain three star fragments from three different dungeons, and the only one who can obtain them is you. So, after some reluctance, you decide to go forth and help Giraffe, hoping that you can ultimately uncover the mystery surrounding your identity and why you're here. Not long after you start Giraffe and Annika, will you be entranced by both the beautiful world that surrounds you and the way that it presents its story and gameplay. Its environments are beautiful and vibrant, and its menus follow suit with bright colors and a cartoon-inspired aesthetic. I also liked the comic-style presentation of its story, which is a cute and fun way to bring us into the game's world. It's through its presentation that you can tell that Atsushi Saito's background comes from character and visual design. Saito's previous work includes designing the characters and backgrounds in Guitar Man for the PS2 and PSP, directing illustrations for Osu Tatakai Oendan for the DS, and, strangely enough, background design for the Black Eyed Peas experience for the Xbox 360. And while these games don't necessarily reflect the kind of art style that Giraffe and Annika has, I could tell just by playing the game that Saito's previous work helped and influence his design choices. Saito aimed really high by choosing to develop Giraffe and Annika as a 3D game. Knowing so, Saito opted for a level design aesthetic that is reminiscent, but not entirely representative, of some PS2-era titles, at least on the Switch version. While it's a style that, in all honesty, doesn't age gracefully, it works well when looking at locations from afar. However, closer inspection reveals that there's a sparseness to this otherwise vibrant-looking world. Out of curiosity, I did look up some gameplay of the Steam version, and there's obviously a ton more detail in the texturing and its environments compared to what I played. And while I can't fault the Switch's limitations, I've played many other games on it that demonstrate that it is possible to achieve a high level of graphical fidelity, which gives me the impression that this game was designed primarily as a Steam release, with little consideration as to how it'd look and perform on other platforms. These details are reflective of the somewhat uneven experience I had playing Giraffe and Annika, whose beautiful veneer starts to crack when you start further engaging with its many gameplay systems. This started happening to me when I did a main story quest that asked me to find five rabbits hidden in the surrounding area. I easily found three of the rabbits. But then, after some time passed, I got a notification saying that the rest of the rabbits went home because it was nightfall. This basically meant that not only did I need to advance time to morning again, but I also had to speak to the NPC who issued the task, which then restarted the entire thing all over again. Meaning I had to go and grab the three rabbits that I'd already found, while, at the same time, looking for the other two that were still hidden. The frustrating thing about this is that, in actuality, there was only one rabbit left. After finding said rabbit, I got another notification saying you've found all of the rabbits, despite still missing one. Imagine the kind of frustration that I had when trying to look for two rabbits and not really knowing that, in actuality, I really needed to find only one more. Couple this frustration with a day and night cycle that's quicker than most games out there, and this quest has the potential to frustrate even the most patient of players. 
Unfortunately, this quest is indicative of the quality of the many story quests you'll be asked to do in Giraffe and Annika, and the numerous fetch quests and search for this kind of objectives wore me out very quickly. Despite my disappointment with its main story quests, I had high hopes that Giraffe and Annika's dungeons would be where it'd deliver its best features. After all, whenever you think of exploring a dungeon, the mere idea gives you visions of mystery, grandeur, and outright adventure. Sadly, the first dungeon in the game, while thematically interesting, is also, at the same time, uninteresting. The first thing you'll quickly notice is that you have absolutely no way to combat the many ghosts that populate the area. In a way, I can appreciate what the base design is on paper. You're basically playing tag with the ghosts that inhabit this place. What this really means though, is that you're mostly just running through this entire dungeon, occasionally straying from the beaten path to open up chests containing collectibles. Later dungeons actually change the way the ghosts try to get you, but there are certainly ones that feel better designed than others. One problematic dungeon had ghosts spitting slime at me, requiring me to hide behind objects or jump out of the way on time. After clearing a section of this dungeon, I decided to read a signpost nearby, at which point I realized that this did not, in fact, stop the ghosts from attacking me. They ultimately pelted me with enough slime that I was incapacitated and forced to restart the section all over again. The design of the dungeons in Giraffe and Annika feel as though conceptually they should work. However, the actual execution of the final designs show that its creator might have been a bit too overambitious when it comes to their implementation. At the end of every dungeon is a boss fight, which is primarily played as a rhythm game. These sections have three selectable difficulty levels and consist of two highways, with attack nodes traveling towards you, which you can break by pressing or holding a button. Later fights add a mechanic or two, such as ghosts to avoid and obstructions that temporarily block your view of incoming notes and ghosts, which actually makes these battles feel more action-oriented than typical rhythm gameplay. Giraffe and Annika's boss battles do get progressively more challenging as you get further into the game, and I think that these gameplay portions are the most fleshed out out of my entire experience with it. Then, just like that, my experience with Giraffe and Annika was done. My playthrough of Giraffe and Annika clocked in an approximately a little over 5 hours long, so it's definitely not an epically long tale. And yet, after finishing the game and experiencing its ending, I couldn't help but think about what I played and got confused by its numerous design decisions. Certainly, from a presentation standpoint, Giraffe and Annika has a solid visual design, but this is compromised depending on the choice of platform you get it on. And while I'm certain that many of you will enjoy listening to its wonderfully light soundtrack, its gameplay will pull you back down to reality, asking you to partake in fetch quests galore and exploring dungeons that could have been so much more. My experience has me conflicted, because I see that Saito's ambitions are laid bare in this game, showing small glimpses of wonderful yet unrealized ideas throughout. However, as much as I admire the childlike wonder and cheer brought forth by its story, I can't ignore the fact that Giraffe and Annika overreached in many different aspects. And while I wasn't expecting the same kind of polish in this game compared to the works of many other solo developers out there, at the very least, I expected Giraffe and Annika to have fun ways to explore and uncover the mysteries of this strange island. As with most games, I don't doubt that there's an audience out there that'll love Giraffe and Annika for all its quirks and imperfections. But for me, Giraffe and Annika isn't so much a tale about a young girl trying to uncover her own identity, as it is a strikingly poignant metaphor that describes its struggles with its own identity.